Hello, black women. Hello, friends. If you are thinking about moving abroad before the next election or thinking about thinking about moving abroad before the next election, this video is for you. I'm not here to do any fear mongering. OK, this is not me like sounding an alarm. This is me answering some questions based on conversations that I think are already happening among black women in the United States. Uh, what I'm hearing with my ears is that black women are already bringing this subject up. And so I want to talk to you today about the how, the why, the who, the where of moving abroad before the next election in the U.S., okay? But first, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Stephanie Perry. I'm a house sitter. I'm the creator of House Sitter School, and I'm the co-creator of Exodus Summit. I help black women take a sabbatical or a career break, move abroad, bop around as a nomad, all while embracing ease. If these things sound good to you, please make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please hit that subscribe button. I'll wait. Thank you. Okay, and then turn on notifications. Ring that notification bell so that you will be notified when I post a new video or when I go live. Welcome. Okay, so I'm hearing things lately among black women that make me think that this video is uh, important. I do coaching calls with black women and, you know, I have friends and do meetups and get togethers and stuff. And at every time that I have been in community with more than one or two other black women, someone has asked me this question. Uh, do we need to get out of the country before the next election? Or has just said, I want to get out of the country before the next election. Um, um, every conversation has included the sentence, uh, things are getting bad here. And that's alarming to me because black women are used to living in places where things are bad. Right? I mean, not too many of us would be like, oh, things, things were great here before. Uh, and so for it to seem bad enough for us to notice it and comment on it, you know, means it's worse, right? We're, it, things are getting worse, okay? So let's talk today about how to make a plan to get out of the country, how to get your plan together. Okay, one more thing I want to sneak in here before we get started is that uh, a lot of people have the mindset that you shouldn't run away from XYZ, but that's exactly what running is for. And <laughs> we are humans, we are designed to want safety and for ourselves, for our families. And so if you want to want, run away from white people who mean you harm, I'm not here to tell you to stay, okay? If you want to run away from a situation that is like a reaching a boiling point, Run away. Run away from it. You can run away from something harmful while running to something better. You can do both, okay? I'm an advocate for that, okay? Leave the things that are not serving you. Move towards the things that will serve you better. We can do that, okay? So you don't have to worry about me saying, oh, don't run away from X, Y, Z. You feel safe there, but don't run away from it. Run towards something. You can run away from something while running towards something good, okay? We can do both, okay? This is my 285th video on YouTube. Can you believe that? On this channel. I have another channel and a half, okay? But this is my 285th video on this channel, I have provided a lot of information about leaving the U.S., either temporarily or permanently. I know it's a lot of information, okay? So even though I'm going to try to point you to some other videos in the description of this video, it's a lot of information on a channel who does really long videos. I talk a lot, okay? So please watch till the end of this video for some accelerated help in your move abroad, okay? So if watching 285 videos from me to get more information on how to make your move abroad possible or how to make your, you know, temporary time out of the U.S. possible, uh, if, that, if watching 285 videos is too much, okay, I understand that. I agree. Uh, I'm going to point you to a resource that will help you in a shorter period of time. Uh, the Exodus Summit will help act as a catalyst towards your move abroad, and I'll give you a whole lot of information about that later. So stick, stick with me on this video, okay? So first, let's talk about why uh, someone might want to leave the United States before the next election. Actually, we don't need to talk about that. You already know, okay? I don't think that this is something that I need to cover too in depth. Uh, for your own safety, for your own peace of mind, so that you don't have to always be looking over your shoulder when you go into a store or a park or a church or a school, whatever, okay? Safety is a real reason for people to want to move out of the United States, in particular black people, okay? 
why safety reason number one um we get the message in the united states that we are in a safe place and the other place is the dangerous place so questions that people who are new to this kind of thing always ask is oh is it safe in such and such a place i heard it's not safe there i heard they don't like black people there okay um, i don't know you're going to be hard pressed to find a place you actually want to live in right not a place that you've heard of but you're going to be hard pressed to find a place you actually want to live in that is less safe than where you live today okay uh, the United States is overrun with guns. Your neighbor has guns. You probably, you might have guns, right? Your neighbor has weapons. Nobody's monitoring your neighbor's state of mind <laughs> at this moment. Nobody's monitoring people uh, in, in that you come into contact with all day, every day. Uh, in some countries, it's just really, really hard for people to get guns. Really hard. That is reason number one why you'll feel safer. In other places, as a black person, and in particular as an American black person, police don't care about you and what you're doing, okay? Another reason to feel safe. If you are living your life in the U.S. where anytime you come into contact with a police officer, you start to tense up and feel fight or flight start to kick in and all of that, uh, you're not going to feel that when you go to other countries they don't care about you and what you're doing. In fact, the police might actually stop and give you directions and help you with something as opposed to feeling you feeling threatened by them. I've been pulled over by the police in Australia and South Africa. Yeah, I've driven on, in quite a few countries abroad, but I've pull, been pulled over by the police in both Australia and South Africa. Uh, talk about zero nervousness. I mean, zero nervousness, okay? So safety, number one reason. Number two reason why you might wanna move abroad is sanity. Okay, you may want value your peace of mind and you may want to move towards a place where you can have more peace of mind. Uh, another, you may want to move abroad because of better health care. I'm going to give you a bunch of reasons. Okay, now before the next election, maybe health care is not a reason to move before the next election. It's just a general reason to move abroad. Um, other places view people as humans and not as workers first. Okay, I'm not saying other countries don't view people as workers, right? But in the United States, you're a worker first, last, and in the middle. And so things like healthcare are not a priority. In other countries, you're going to go there with some sort of legal access to that country. You also gain legal access to their healthcare system. It's a whole new concept to Americans. Unless you've been in the U.S. military, you probably don't even understand what I'm saying, okay? But it's like being in the military in some other countries. Healthcare is there. It exists. You have it, okay? Go to the doctor. <laughs> uh, so why safety, sanity, health care? Who can move abroad? Who should consider this? Uh, you should consider this if you're really feeling uptight and upset and nervous about people, being around other people, being around the people in the United States of America right now. You should consider it, okay? I'm not saying you should do it, but I'm saying you should consider it. See if you can put a plan together. If every time you walk out of the house, you're petrified of losing your life or your children, consider it. Consider going to another place, okay? Um, Sometimes, and now I said with your children, because a lot of people don't realize that leaving the country with your children may not be a really hard thing. A lot of the people in the move abroad space on YouTube are people who don't have school age children. I call I say child age children, right? Who don't have child age children. And so you don't necessarily see people out moving abroad in this space with young children, but it it happens. I'll link to a couple in the description of this video. Ashley in Africa moved with two school age children to Tanzania and then Johannesburg, South Africa. Um and she's always the first person I can remember, but there are several. Charisma who is on YouTube Charisma Cares, I think she's still Charisma Cares on YouTube. She and her son spend months abroad at a time. They spent months in the Caribbean, I believe months in Mexico, and now they're going to Africa any day now. They leave any day now for months uh, to travel around the continent of Africa. Uh, so if you have children, that doesn't exclude you. If you're a caregiver for a an adult person, another person, that doesn't exclude you. People are doing this. And if you... Um, our single solo person, right? It's just you. People are doing this, okay? So who? Probably you. 
another caveat to the who should consider this. You should consider this if you're not one of the people who's always saying, you can't leave the country. You're going to miss out on everything we fought for, everything we're working to get. Okay. I happen to think that we're not getting it. Okay. <laughs> I know that there are people who are holding out hope that the promises that this country has made to its citizens, it will deliver. I have no reason to believe that. I don't know why anybody would have any reason to believe that. But there are people, every time we have this conversation, who say, you can't, we built this country. You can't leave this country. You're going to lose out on everything that we are promised. Good luck to you if that's what you think, okay? Good luck to you. I hope it works. I sincerely hope it works out. But you can send my reparations to Costa Rica, okay? I'll be, okay? Send my reparations to me. I'm not waiting around for them, okay? Who should think about moving abroad before the next election? Maybe you, okay? So how? We're going to talk about a few hows. What do you need? And we're going to talk about finding a job. I'm looking at my notes. <laughs> what do you need? We're going to talk quickly about finding a job or work. Uh, and we're going to talk about the money. I think those are the three things we're going to cover in the how section. What do you need to be able to move abroad before the next election? You need to look at countries that give you a clear path to residency. Country, every country has a path to residency for foreigners. It has a pathway for you to get some sort of residency. Temporary residency, which usually is, usually you start with temporary residency and then you can convert it into permanent residency. But some countries, you might qualify for permanent residency off the jump, okay? So you need to, what you need first is a country with a clear path of residency whose requirements you meet. It's not a mystery why so many black women from the U.S. are moving to countries like Panama and Mexico and Costa Rica and Portugal. These are countries that have clearly outlined what you need to get temporary or, and or permanent residency. And their requirements have been uh, reasonably priced, right? Reason, reasonably priced access or entry into their country as a, as a resident. The green card, right? What we know in the U.S. as a green card also happens to be a green card in Mexico. Uh, but if they have a clear pathway that's clearly outlined, basically you need to be making X amount of dollars or you need to have X amount of dollars in your bank account. Well, it, for Mexico, of course, it's pesos, but then you convert that to dollars. You know, you, you do the little conversion, the little translation on your phone or in your, on your computer and figure out how many dollars they mean when they say pesos. OK, um, there are places that have a clear pathway to residency for Americans or uh, foreigners. There are some that don't have a really clear pathway. So you need to find one and find one whose requirements you meet. Um, for me, that is priority number one for where to move abroad, because I don't I'm not jumping through a whole bunch of hoops to get residency abroad. Costa Rica fits that for me. They have a pretty clear. It's clearly laid out. The process is clear. I want easy access back to the United States, okay, because my parents, my family live in the United States, and so I want to be able to get back easily. My parents are what you would call senior citizens, but we're going to have to push that back soon because people are living longer and longer. That's a different topic, but how can you really be a senior citizen at 65 now when like 99 is no big deal. Everybody's family has 99-year-olds in it nowadays, so are they really senior citizens at this point? I don't know, but my but they, my parents are here in the United States. I want to be able to fly back the, the, to them, and I want them to be able to fly to me in a reasonable amount of time. What that means to me is six hours. I like to be a six-hour flight or less nonstop from them. If I needed to be back in an emergency, I could be back here in, within a six-hour flight. Uh, to me, that means Latin America, including Mexico. That means Portugal or Western, the Western part of Europe, the Western part of Western Europe. Yeah, okay? So uh, a number three requirement for me is the weather because I don't do winter, okay? Team boycott winter. Uh, I want access to the weather I want all the time. That may mean staying in one place where the weather is always within your parameters. It may mean going to two different places where the weather fits your needs. Snowbirds are a thing. Also for me, cost of living is very important, right? It's becoming less and less important, I'll tell you, okay? When I first started this move abroad, journey and the life of living nomadically, which I've been doing since 2015, money was priority number one. It's moved down the list uh, now that I'm making more money, right? The secret to solving a lot of problems is just to make more money. That has happened for me, uh, but money is still a concern. I don't, I'm not going to 
even if Switzerland was a warm weather paradise, I wouldn't be going to Switzerland. I don't want to pay those prices, okay? So money, cost of living are things that we need to, um, that I have put on my list. Let me turn this thing on. You have to make your own list of needs. So speaking of cost of living, let's move into the next thing that we need. We need the money to be somewhere else. So how much money do you need to live in another place? It depends. <laughs> it depends. There are cost of living calculators out there that will give you a relatively accurate cost of living for various cities around the world. Um, I've, we've compiled some of those cost of living calculators into one toolkit called the Work From Anywhere Toolkit. If you go to exodussummit.com slash toolkit. You can get the work from anywhere toolkit and you'll see we, we inside the toolkit we link to some cost of living calculators that help you figure out how much you need to live in vis different cities around the world. Make sure that you understand that the people are reporting their cost of living. They're not always people who are trying to live on a budget. So just because it says a place costs X amount of dollars or whatever their currency is per month doesn't mean it can't be done for less. Uh, but Work From Anywhere Toolkit is at exodussummit.com slash toolkit, and we link to some cost of living calculators. You can get that toolkit in the description of this video. Once you have a good estimate of what the cost of living will be in a place that you're interested in going, you need to know where that money's going to come from, okay? A lot of people think that working in a new country or getting a job in a new country is the shortest way or the easiest way to get there, but it's probably not. Working in another country where the cost of living is low means that the pay is low, right? Low cost of living equals low wages. Um, it's probably not going to fit your needs if you're talking about moving someplace like Thailand or somewhere, right? Low cost of living equals low wages. And countries are not very big on letting foreign workers in to take jobs away from their people just like the United States isn't, okay? Caveat to that is unless you have a skill set that they have deemed in demand. What do they call it? I wrote this down. Skill shortages. So your desired country may have listed out some skill shortages, and that may be a pathway to you getting a work permit and residency in another country. But for most of us, 99 out of 100 of us, uh, that's trying to get a work permit in another country is going to be difficult, if not impossible, and not worth the time and effort based on what the pay would look like. Instead, you would want to find a way to make dollars, right, or make whatever your currency is, but spend that in another country. We do that in a few different ways. We do that by working remotely, working online for an employer who's not in that other country, so you're not violating your residency permit that doesn't allow you to have a job in that country, right? Um, but you're making, you're making your income in a job that allows you to be remote. I'm also not talking about lying to your employer and pretending that you're in the United States when you're really in Mexico, because if they care to find out where you are, they will find out where you are and then they'll fire you. And then you're abroad with no income. Okay. No money. I don't do that. I don't recommend that. Okay. I make my income a few different ways, including uh, YouTube, my YouTube channel, including my coaching business, including my Exodus summit business. And you know, I'm a house sitter. And so I don't need to pay for a place to stay. Right. So those things combined mean that I can live other places and not have to worry about trying to get a job in another country, which, again, is difficult. The easiest job, though, that I think I don't want to say easiest, but a, a straightforward job that people do get inside of my community so that they can live abroad is teaching. Te if you teach in the United States and you want to teach in another country, that might be a good pathway to you getting out of the United States into a new country, getting residency, getting set up in, a new, in another place. OK, so let's say you have now access to some income, maybe from a remote job, maybe just from your savings and investments. Maybe your savings and investments will support you. Good. I'm, glad. I'm so happy for you. Then all you need is like the cushion, the money you need to actually move to another country. How much that is depends, right? How much do you need to actually move to another country? If you still, if you have a job and you have income coming in, or if you have investment money coming to you, how much does it cost to move to another country? It depends. I recommend that people move without shipping a whole house full of stuff. We're not shipping stuff to other countries. Uh, just move with your, sell your stuff in the U.S., Get your pack some suitcases and move to another country with a bunch, with some suitcases. You know, four four suitcases per person sounds fine to me. It's a lot, but it sounds fine. Um, and then get the things that you need in your new country. 
probably where you want to go. They're going to have access to the things that you want. You know, Mexico has Sam's Club, <laughs> right? And Costco. Mexico has Sam's Club and Costco. Okay, so you're going to be fine. But you will want to take a runway. You will want to take some savings, some actual money to have money on hand. You don't want to have to just wait for a paycheck to kick in before you can do anything in another country. Having income, though, having a paycheck that you know is coming in means that you need less of a runway, but you're still going to need a runway, okay? If you are connected in some, like, Facebook groups for expats who have moved from their country into that new city that you're going to, right? If you're in some Facebook groups, some people can give you an idea of how much things cost, things that you're going to need to set up your new life in a new place, okay? So how, what you need to move abroad is you need to know what your priorities are. I gave you my priorities, but you need to figure out your own. What you, what I say I needed or need is require, um, residency that will accept me. I need easy access to the U.S. I need no winter weather. <laughs> I need a cost of living that I can afford. Um, and those were things that made Costa Rica higher on the list for me than it might be for you. So remember that in the description of this video, I've linked to some other videos of mine and some of my homegirls that explain more about how to figure out these needs. Also remember that Exodus Summit is happening. Exodus Summit is a virtual summit or an online conference for black women who are ready to plan their sabbatical, their move abroad, their nomadic life. Exodus Summit is online October 6 through 9, 2023, and tickets are available at exodussummit.com. In the beginning of this video, I called Exodus Summit a catalyst for your move abroad. It's because this is the fourth year that we've hosted Exodus Summit, and every year Exodus Summit has helped helped black women get their plan together so that they could start their sabbatical or their move abroad or their nomadic life. They're already doing it. Women who attended Exodus Summit last year are already moving, are already living abroad. Women who attended Exodus Summit last year are already living, bopping around as a nomad or are already out on their sabbaticals. Exodus Summit's theme this year is location freedom, time freedom, and financial freedom for black women. Location freedom, time freedom, financial freedom for black women. If one of these things would be helpful for you, then I recommend that you come to Exodus Summit 2023, okay? We have speakers coming in to, to teach you how to get those individual things. And then if you have the all access pass, we have some amazing keynote speakers this year who are coming in to help you put it all together. Get a vision for what you want for yourself. I said in the beginning that you want, it's okay to run away from something and towards something else. But how do you know what you're moving towards if you don't have the clarity? The speakers who are our keynotes this year are gonna help you work on that in particular. Our keynote speakers this year are Tabitha Brown, Dr. Joy Harden Bradford, the founder of Therapy for Black Girls, and Rachel Cargill. Uh, they're coming in to help you get a bigger, picture, a clearer picture for yourself. Okay. Exodus Summit again is happening October 6 through 9. You can get your tickets at exodussummit.com. If you're watching the replay, hello friends in the future. I hope it's amazing there. Uh, if you're watching this replay and the, the summit has already happened, you can still go to exodussummit.com, get a replay ticket. Okay. It does it. There's no deadline on your exodus. There's no deadline when you're ready to start planning, not when you're ready to go, but when you're ready to start planning, get your ticket to Exodus Summit 2023. Yes, I'm doing a session on house sitting at Exodus Summit 2023. If the, if you heard me say that I get free accommodation, and so that means I need a whole lot less money to live places and I can just go based on the weather. Uh, I'm not the only one. House sitting might be a wonderful option for you too. And I'm teaching house sitting at Exodus Summit. Rashida Dow, the co-creator of Exodus Summit, my co-founder, is also speaking at Exodus Summit. She's a career break coach. She's, she's going to break down the career break process for you. For those of you who are new to this idea, how do you plan and take a career break and why do you do it? Why is it worth it? Okay, so moving abroad before the next election. If this is something that you're concerned with and you want to make happen, you can do it. Uh, we're talking 15 months, I think, 14 months. In 2015, starting in 2014, it took me 14 months to save $15,000 so I could bop around as a nomad for a year. And that uh, was on me earning $22 an hour as a pharmacy technician. So I'm not here to tell you that it can't be done. It can be done. 
get the resources and the tools that you need to expedite those things. I've mentioned a few here in this video. Go to the description of this video, get those tools, get yourself a plan together. Some of the things that you think are hindrances or barriers to you living abroad or bopping around as a nomad really aren't. They just might require an extra solution but it doesn't mean that it's impossible for you. Somebody with your exact same thing, hur hurdle, right? Somebody who has this, a similar hurdle to you is doing it, okay? So get information. Some of that information is in the description of this video, okay? All right, thank you so much for watching this video. Please take a second, leave me a comment in the video and let me know what is a concern of yours about trying to move abroad, okay? Let me know what move abroad concern or question you have. Or if you've already done it, let me know that too, okay? If, you, if it's because I gave you some helpful information, please share that in the comments so I can take all the credit. Thank you, all right? One more thing I'm gonna ask you for, please share this video with a black woman you know who is ready to start getting her move abroad plan together. Hit the share button and let her know. I did not keep all this information to myself. I shared it with you. Now please, you share it with her. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.